mapping a real function. It is a relation between two variables or two sets in which each element of the first set is connected to a unique element of the second set. Let us consider a real function, y is equal to x square. To draw the graph of this function, we give values to x. As a result, we get the values of y. If we put x is equal to 0, we get the value of y, which is 0. So we get a point 0, 0. We draw that point on the graph paper, which is the origin here. If we put x is equal to 1, we get the value of y, which is 1. So we get a point 1, 1 and draw it on the graph paper. If we put x is equal to 2, 2 square is 4. So we get another point 2, 4. We draw it on the graph paper. If we put x is equal to 3, we get 9. Similarly, if we put x is equal to minus 1, we get 1. So that is the point minus 1, 1. If we put minus 2 here, we get 4. And we draw that point here, which is minus 2, 4. Similarly, if we put minus 3, we get 9. So we draw this point here. Now we connect these points by a curve. And that is called the graph of this real function, y is equal to x square. The set of values of the first variable, which is x, that is called domain. And the set of values of the second variable, that is y, it is called range of this function. The complex mapping has the same definition as that of the real function. The difference is that its domain as well as range will be the set of complex numbers. However, to draw the graph of a complex mapping, it is totally different from the graph of the real function. Because for a complex function, we need a plane in xy, which is two dimensional plane, and we need another plane in uv which is also two dimensional plane. So this is actually a plane of four dimensional, which is not possible to draw on a graph paper. So what we do, we, we consider two plane. What, one is called Z plane in XY, the other is called W plane in UV. Now we substitute the value of X1 and Y1 here. Let us say the value of x is x1 and y is y1. So we draw that point here. Now putting x is equal to x1, y is equal to y1 in u, we get u1. Putting the value of x is equal to x1, y is equal to y1 in v, we get the value of v1. So from this we get a point here which is u1, v1. So we combine or connect this point of the xy plane to this point in the uv plane. Similarly, we give values to xy, we get a point x2, y2 in the xy plane, and with the help of this, we get the values u2, v2 in the w plane, and so on. Let us draw the graph of a complex function f of z is equal to z square under the condition that y is equal to 1. Before to draw the graph, we must simplify this function in such a way to get the value of u and v. So we substitute z is equal to x plus iota y on both sides and then expanding this whole square and after simplification we get this thing. Now we are given that y is equal to 1 so put y is equal to 1 on both sides. We have f of x plus 1 iota 
is equal to x square minus 1 plus 2x iota. Now, since w is equal to f of z, f of z we have obtained here, and w is u plus iota v, comparing the real and imaginary parts on both sides, we get two equations. From equation two, we can obtain the value of x. Substituting this value in one, we get, after simplification, a relation between u and v. And now we are in the position to draw the graph. First of all, let us consider the z plane, which is in x, y. Now, since it is given that y is equal to one, so we can just draw a straight line passing from y is equal to one, and that is the graph. On this line, y is one, but x is changing. The second method is the eight. Since z is equal to x plus iota y, but y is given, which is one, so we have z is equal to x comma one. Now y is fixed, which is one, and giving values to x, we get different points. Plotting these points on the graph paper and passing a curve from these points, again, we get the same straight line, which is passing from y is equal to one and parallel to x axis. Let us draw the graph in the w plane. So we have obtained a relation between u and v. Let us substitute different values of u here. First, we put u is equal to minus one and we get v is equal to zero. That is the first point, minus one comma zero. Let us plot this point on the graph paper. Now substitute u is equal to zero here. So we get two values of v plus minus two. So these are two points, zero comma plus two, which is this point, and zero comma minus two, which is this point. Similarly, we substitute u is equal to one, we get this point, which is plus minus 2.8. We plot this point on the graph paper. So this is one comma plus 2.8, and this point is one comma minus 2.8. Now substitute u is equal to two, we get this point, u is equal to three, we get this point. Plotting all these points on the graph paper and passing a curve from these points, we get the graph of this relation. And we can see that with the help of a complex function, we transform a straight line parallel to the x-axis from the z-plane to a parabola in the w-plane. Conformal mapping. Consider a complex function f of z and draw the graph of this complex function. Let us, under some condition, the graph of this function in the z plane is a curve C1 whose image in the W plane is R1. And under some other condition, the graph of this function in the z plane is a caro c2 whose image in the w plane is r2. Let us say that c1 and c2 intersect at the point p0 while r1 and r2 intersect at the point p1. So now we can find an angle between C1 and C2 denoted by theta1. And we can also find the angle theta2 between R1 and R2. If the angle theta1 is equal to the angle theta2 in the sense of magnitude as well as direction, then the mapping of this complex function f of z 
is called a conformal mapping. In the sense of magnitude, we mean that if theta one is 30 degree, theta two must also be 30 degree. If theta one is 45 degree, theta two must be 45 degree. If we measure theta one in the anti-clockwise direction, then we shall also measure theta two in the same anti-clockwise direction. This example can be solved by using the same method which we have discussed in this lecture. That's all.